I think the main climate events that are the most worrying are the ones that an individual experiences themselves. And so it changes for different parts of the planet. Uh, if you live in an area that's prone to drought, then hot, um, extreme temperatures um, and a lack of rainfall ends up being a really worrying climate event for you. So it really depends on where you are and where what your vulnerabilities are. For some it's drought, for some it's fire, flooding, coastal storms. But there are also um, events that trigger global threats that concern all of us, right? So those are the melting of the glaciers and ice sheets that contribute to global sea level rise. Those are kind of take place on a longer time scale, um, but they are a kind of a long, uh, long lasting threat. And then there's a third group of, of potential worrying events, and we call these potential tipping points. Those are high impact, low probability events that are hard to predict but if they were to occur, they could cause major changes in our climate. So this would be like losing very large tracts of tropical forests, say the Amazon, or collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet. If those cataclysmic events were to happen, those would be of great concern to everyone. Well, first, can I say that I think the world uh, owes Chile a great debt for bringing ocean issues uh, f uh, to the front, to the fore in our conversations about climate change, because the oceans are so important to, um, to the issue of climate change. The oceans play this amazing role in kind of mitigating the effects of climate change because they absorb so much heat and so many greenhouse gases. Um, but with regard to uh, marine pollution, you know, I think the entire globe is focused on the issue of plastics. Um, I, th I heard today on the, on the news that um, right now there is more plastic in the ocean than there is the weight of fish in the ocean, which is mind boggling to think about. That's an enormous problem. And I think many countries are, are waking up to this problem. I, here in my own country in the US, there are many, uh, many municipalities and states and even federal um, initiatives to look at the question of plastics. Um, and I think, that's a, I think that's an issue that almost every global citizen can understand because we see plastics around us um, everywhere. And, um, and I also think it's a very tangible problem that people can possibly put their attention to and change in their own lives. I, I mean, there are some places on earth then that can um, capture the imagination of society and inspire us to preserve, preserve them and preserve the greater, um, the greater wild places. And I, I think that the far northern and southern poles, so the Arctic and the Antarctic, are two places um, that do capture people's Im imagination because they are so remote and relatively pristine and unpopulated. Um, so when we talk about climate changes to these places, it demonstrates just how far our actions as humans um, are reaching. You know, I, I think it's very sobering that places that have never been touched by a human footprint are now being deeply impacted by our carbon footprint. So Chile, because of its proximity to Antarctica, has a chance to highlight uh, just how special that place is and how vulnerable it is. I mean, the West Antarctic ice sheet is so critical to global sea level rise. Um, but I would just say also that Chile has um, other areas of remarkable beauty and biodiversity. Um, 
And I just feel like all countries need to remind us what we potentially lose if we don't act urgently to stop climate change.